Hey, this is Keith Ball from Bikernet.com. We're here live at the AMD affiliate show at the Milwaukee Harley-Davidson Custom Bike Show 2012, and I have the pleasure to talk to another one of our bike show participants, Scott Mayert, who built the uh, inked bagger here. It's an amazing motorcycle. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing good. Well, I know this this bike has a tremendous story behind it. Uh, let's let's get started and uh, and tell me a little bit about what got you started with this. Well, I wanted to build a custom bike for a few years, and I spent a lot of time just thinking about an idea that no one had done before. Collected a bunch of art, and one day, as I looked at everything that I'd put together, it just kind of dawned on me that I should put a full body tattoo on a motorcycle and hooked up with Deadline Customs to help me try and figure out how to do that. And uh, that bike is the finished result. Well, you, tell me about that conversation you had with him, one of your first conversations with uh, Dana Halberg from Deadline, when you were talking to him about how you wanted people to respond to the bike. Well, I, I met them in Sturgis a few years earlier, and I had kind of decided at that point that they would build the bike and I, I called a, a party which <clears throat> turned into a bike building meeting at my garage. So he showed up with the, him and his painter and a few other people and I laid a file down in front of him that was about a foot thick with about 200 different tattoo ideas and drawn out the way I, I wanted it on the bike and I think initially they thought I was insane which now they kind of know that I am but um, we had several conversations after that, and they finally realized that I was serious, and you know that uh, they agreed to to go ahead and build the bike. And and from there, we just you know started picking out the rest of the parts and laying things out the way we wanted to lay them out on the bike. And when it got painted, it was probably a six-week process. Uh, Money did the airbrushing on it, and, and in six weeks, he took off Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, which I thought. I should let him have those two days off, but uh, um, <clears throat> I think we talked every day in those six weeks, and it, it was really a collaboration of you know me and him on the paint, and you know the tattoos. Just about every tattoo on the bike is really personal to me. Um, you know, if I could go out and get tattoos, those would probably be the tattoos that I'd have. Um, you know, so it was it was an extremely enjoyable process, and I you know couldn't have worked with anyone better to do it. Well, you told me some great stories, one about how you wanted people to respond and, and once they came over and looked at the bike, how, the, how they'd see it from a distance. Yeah, we initially, we, what we wanted is from a distance the bike to have lines to it that, that made people interested, you know, what, what is that kind of idea. And when, when they got up to the bike, we, we thought, you know, we wanted them to stay there for 10 minutes. and and. Yeah, that was kind of like one of the first conversations we had, and after going to shows all, all across the country, that's exactly what ended up happening. You also mentioned to me the story about you and your son going to a movie when you were in the, in the paint process. Yeah, yeah we, uh, you know, I, I had laid out about 80% of what I wanted on the bike, and the one back corner is a racing section. I, I race a V-Rod Destroyer, and... <clears throat> I didn't know exactly what was going to be there. Money was painting, and I had, you know, a few days to kind of make my mind up what it was going to be. And we went to the movie. Um, there was a preview for the Ghost Rider. <clears throat> he was whipping his chain over the top of his head, and uh, you know, that and and a bunch of other things on the bike. Just when I needed the inspiration, it just came there. I was literally sending him a text from the theater telling him I got it. That's amazing. Uh, tell me also about your performance package and what it developed. Yeah, the, the motor is a 120R. Um, like I said, I race a bike, so the guy that works on my race bike built me this motor, so it's, it's been completely torn apart. Um, it's got the Hurricane, or the Harley Hurricane heads on it that have been sent out and worked on. It's, it's, the compression's jumped up to 11.2. It's got big woods cams in it, so the motor itself uh, dynoed at 150 horsepower, and then the nitrous will add another 30 to that. Well, one of the amazing aspects of the bike is just the way the sheet metal flows. Tell us about the modifications. Yeah, we had a few, few custom deals. The, the headlights are um, 
the LED headlights that Harley makes for, um, I believe the Dyna model, it's the smaller headlights. Um, it's one of the things I knew right away that I wanted to put in there, so they had to make a custom bracket and bezel to get those to fit. And then, you know, there's parts from all the different big parts makers on it. So the, the tank is a Yaffe tank. It's got a FBI drop seat kit in it. It's got a bad dad fender and rear end on it. So when you get three different manufacturers meeting in one spot, um, Dana from Deadline had to custom make the side panels to tie all that together. And <clears throat> I think he wanted to give up on it a couple times because it was quite a project, but he, uh, he stuck to it. And I, I think it's one of the, the nicer features on the bike. Well, you did a drop seat and that also entailed a different side panel. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the drop seat comes with a side panel, but it's not meant to tie a Yaffe tank to different rear end. So to get it to get it to really flow all the way through the bike, we had to make those side panels. Well, tell me, um, I met the team and the, the painting team just did a magnificent job. Tell me about uh, about Jeff and Mike, the pinstriper. Yeah, they they worked hard. I think I don't know that they kept track of it, but there's probably about 400 hours worth of time between the paint and the pinstriping. And you know, they really got into doing the job and make it perfect. Um, an example is, you know, a tattoo isn't black. Um, it's kind of a faded gray black. So money who you know, has tattoos, was literally mixing paint and drawing on himself until he got the right color. And then to make it look like a tattoo, because a tattoo has a really sharp edge to it, um, every line on the bike was outlined by a pinstriper, which is Mike Hovland, um, you know, to give it that sharp edge. <laughs> and then all of, the gra all of the script on the bike, which there's quite a bit of it, is just complete freehand um, script and it just, I, I watched him do the back end, it's just amazing. The guy can just take a brush and start writing and there's no no lines to trace, no nothing. He just writes it down. And, and Jeff handled the uh, airbrush work, right? Yeah, Jeff, um, everyone knows him by money, but he did all of the airbrush work. He did all of the, he did all the airbrush and like I said, me and him really collaborated on the design, so he added a lot to what the actual design was too. Well, there's one more really quick story you can tell me about the art on the down tube of the frame. Oh, yeah, I, I uh, you know, we wanted to paint, we wanted, you know, everyone to know that it was a full motor out paint job and kind of like the Ghost Rider story, I needed to put something on the down tube and I, I just didn't know what it was gonna be. I was sitting in my basement one night and this spider drops down from a single web from the ceiling and I'm like, there it is. So there's probably three or four different things on the bike that, just like I said, when I when I needed to know what it was going to be, it just popped up in front of me. Well, it was a pleasure. This is absolutely a magnificent bagger. Pleasure to talk to you.